This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's Moto X time again. This time we're looking at the 2015 edition, the Moto X Pure, known as the Moto X Style overseas. Same phone, different name in, in that way. It keeps getting bigger, doesn't it? A lot of people love the original Moto X because it was a reasonable size phone in the hand. Now it's joining the phablic kind of territory with the 5.7 inch display. And at one point said, Moto said, well, specs don't matter so much. I guess they do because they've moved up to a QHD display here, high resolution Snapdragon 808 CPU inside, good performer, a 21 megapixel camera. So that's one of the highest megapixel rear cameras you're gonna find. Not that megapixels are everything, five megapixel front camera. And as usual, those neat Moto X customizations that are available, a variety of different colored plastic backs, a couple of different woods, a couple of different leather touches, different side trims. We'll talk about all those options and show you a picture. So it's still a very customizable phone. And while it is not a dirt cheap phone, I mean, those are pretty good specs. Nobody's going to sell that to you for $200 full retail, right? Unless it fell off a truck. It's getting up there in price. It's It starts at $399. Call it $400 for the 16 gig with just a plastic back. Sorry, you can't get anything fancy. But each increment you add on storage and a little looking pretty like this guy right here is 475 so that's still a lot cheaper than the flagships but it faces some stiff competition doesn't it now between affordable phones that we've reviewed recently some ones that are coming out like the zt axon the one plus two the elusive one plus two the challenge with that one is whether you can get it anyway a lot of stiff competition we're going to take a look at some of those right now that compete with it so here we have a, a table of desirable product, yeah? This is admittedly the glitzy and the most blingy version of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Now this guy is going to cost you significantly more. Talking full retail prices here, since there is no contract pricing with our Moto X. So this guy is what, about $800, $850. Then we have bounce to the affordable. This is the Asus Zenfone 2. Fast CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, lots of storage, and this one's about $299. So this is things all over the place. LG G4. Also, if you like that classy kind of different kind of back, you can get this. Not with wood, but with obviously the leather finish here. Similar curvy design as the, the Moto X. They've both been rolling the same way for a while here with that kind of look. The LG G4 is not so expensive full retail as the Samsung phones are. I mean, price keeps dropping. I think it's around 550 or so right now from several carriers in the United States. So it's still going to cost you more. We'll talk about what you're gaining or losing. And then in terms of size, for those of you who say, geez, I always love that Moto X, but the size is just getting crazy. Let's see it right here. We're going to sneak it in iPhone amongst the Androids. And here's your standard iPhone 6, not 6 Plus. So you can see the difference in size there and considerably thinner the iPhone because it doesn't have the nice comfy but still noticeable curve or hump on the back. So let's look at the Moto X Pure now. So here it is, the Moto X Pure, the 2015 edition known as the Moto X Style Overseas. Living large, living larger. Every iteration seems to get bigger with the Moto X. Last year was a 5.2 inch display. Now we're up to 5.7 inches. So those of you who love the Moto X for its small, cuddly, hand-holdable experience well you gotta have bigger hands to fit to actually say it is cuddly now S still gives the flagships a run for its money but there have been a lot of affordable phones as we noted that have been coming out in fact this more, more has been the year of the affordable android phone than killer flagship phone so more competition for the moto x like the asus zen phone 2 the the zte axon the one plus two if you could possibly get one that's just to name a few the alcatel one touch idol if you're okay with slightly lower specs but a really thin design pretty good camera and all that sort of thing so how's the moto x going to hold up first off we're going to actually start with something a little bit different which is the presentation in the box because it's changed it's it's quite a much nicer and well obviously a bigger box from previous years so you open it up and it looks like more of a premium device thanks to that and the phone sits over here and then the pokey tool to get the SIM card out and the micro SD card. So we're going to take a look at that just because I went and used one of my existing pokey tools. I tried a paper clip. It just didn't work. This is the world's teeniest little point right here. This looks like a torture device to go and pick on. I don't know what small things. It's really teeny and you got to use the small one. The thicker ones just won't fit in there. And this goes into the top. Here's the door on the phone right here. Poke it out and you have both a nano SIM in there and a micro SD card slot. So unless you keep one of these handy, it has removable storage, which is great for expanding storage, but you're probably not going to be popping that card out and putting it in a card reader. It's just not that convenient. I would use the USB cable on the other end and just mount the phone as a removable storage device on your computer if you needed to do such a thing. 
Another nicety is you actually get the turbocharger, the fast charger in the box. Now it's a pretty big charger, the turbocharger. So you get quick charging in the box. You don't have to spend extra money for that. And it wasn't really listed as, as, as a goodie in here, but in the box we got a bumper for it too. Now, not because it has reception problems. I know some of you can remember old iPhones and the whole bumper brouhaha. No, it doesn't have reception problems. It's pretty great. The other, the, the drawback is this is a pretty rigid piece of plastic. It's not super soft, so it is hard to get on there, but it was in the box. It was free. I'm not going to complain about free. As ever with the Moto X line, you can order it with a variety of colors and accents and all that sort of thing. Obviously, we have the white face here, and we have the champagne side and back trim, which obviously is a, well, a warmer version of silver. I think it looks pretty darn nice, and I decided to experiment here and go with walnut on the back with a white face, a dark wood, a light face, living dangerously. What do you think? That's the thing about the Moto X. You can put together anything you want from the most offensive color scheme in the world to the most aesthetically pleasing and something that just suits you particularly well. In fact, Moto suggested something like a lemon yellow on the back. I think that would look particularly weird in a metallic kind of way. So walnut back right here, $25 extra if you want one of the metal, uh, rather wood backs, and you've got a couple of options. Ebony is really pretty. I went with ebony last year. You've got the light bamboo on here. And then there's a couple of different leather tones as well, which some of them seem to have like a little bit of a crosshatch pattern on them, probably to make them a little bit more durable and scratch resistant is my guess. Really, this is a very thin veneer that's on the back of the phone. You're not getting some seriously heavy chunk of wood here because practically speaking, that doesn't make much sense. And wood actually does block RF and hold and heat a whole lot. So very thin cosmetic veneer. Likewise with leather, it's fairly thin piece of leather over good old durable plastic underneath. The sides are metal. One thing I'm not as impressed about is the little edge that does show right here just says, oh look, plastic. It's not the biggest deal and probably a little more subtle if you've got the black one, but yeah. Uh, by the way, the champagne here, something funny about this. You can either get this with the white with the silver accents or the, the black face with the darker accent. If you want the champagne, you have to get the 32 or 64 gig model. This is sort of reminds me of a car where if you want certain leather interior colors or certain exterior colors, you got to move up to the, you know, the next up model in the line. So that's how they get you if you like this champagne, which is rather fetching. Phone starts at $399, that gets you 16 gigs of internal storage and a plastic back in your choice of a variety of playful and some of them tasteful, some of them subdued colors. So there's pretty much something for everyone and we'll splice in a screenshot so you can see the color selector just for the back colors alone. Of course, the side colors, like I said, silver, the dark accents, or you got your champagne here and a couple of different colors just for this strip right here and for the accent that goes over the grills for the speakers there. The phone is pretty hefty. Moto X's, as they get bigger, just are. It's not as heavy as the Nexus 6, which is also made by Motorola and has very much the same design aesthetic other than you don't get the choice of the colors and the trims and all that sort of thing. You'll definitely feel it in your pocket, and it is a big enough phone. 5.7 inches is as big as all the other 5 to 5, 5 0.5 rather to 5.7 inch flagships on the market, be the iPhone 6 Plus or the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, the Galaxy S6 Edge that we showed you, and the LG G4 all in comparison, and even the Asus Zenfone 2 5.5 inch display, they're pretty big phone, but this one's a bit heavier, and because of the curve, it is of course thicker than some of the ultra skinny phones on the market that keep a flat design, like the iPhone 6 Plus or the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge and Note family phones. The, the nice part is, is that it feels very good in the hand. The curve just fits really well. It's not a slippery material. Even the plastic ones are not slippery. The bad thing is, I know you guys and gals keep crying for skinny bezels on the side and everything looks old fashioned, but doesn't have it. Here's the drawback. See, there's almost no bezel. I have pretty big hands, so my fingers do wrap around. I am almost constantly accidentally doing things I didn't need to do or triggering the wallpaper selector or something like that because there are almost no bezels here. There's a drawback to that. And it's not just the Moto X's problem. There are quite a few phones that have almost no bezels because that's what everybody thinks looks cool right now. Both of these are actual front-facing speakers. They can be used at the same time now. It's not just one for earpiece speaker, one for loudspeaker. 
very good sound, very loud. We'll play a video so you can hear it. I always appreciate a good pair of front-facing speakers. How about you? I, it's the difference between something sounding kind of tinny or muffled, especially if you happen to hold a phone like that, and cover the bottom speakers on certain models of phones who shall remain nameless. Works really well. Nice multimedia experience. Big QHD display here as well. Lovely for video. So how does that display compare to the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge or the Note 5? Both big screen 5.7 inch phones as well with super AMOLED displays. We've got them side by side here showing the same Instagram photo that I posted not too long ago. It's a colorful one with flowers and you can see that. And much as the, the Moto X has a very pretty and pleasing display, the, the Samsung Galaxy is of course going to have more contrast and more color saturation. So here as you take a look a little bit closer, you can see the difference in vibrance. I... So in case you're wondering what the extra money gets you when you buy a Galaxy phone or some other premium phone, there's often these little differences. Also notice the difference in the white, how white they are. The Moto is a little bit warmer, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That, that's a little bit more color accurate, perhaps, than the Super AMOLED that's a little on the cold side. The Super AMOLED is a cool white, pure white. This is a little bit yellow. Now look at the viewing angles as we go off angle and see who disappears more. Uh, Motorola has to make this an affordable phone, relatively speaking. No, it's not a super cheap phone, but one thing that they can do is save a little money by buying an... Uh, IPS LCD that doesn't have quite the wide viewing angles of the most expensive panel on the market. So if you're looking at it off angle, I'd say even in everyday use when I'm using this, I do notice it. You know, some people say, well, who's going to hold their phone at a funny angle? Well, we do because we pull them out of the pocket, we glance at them. And I do notice a darkening even at this much of an off angle to my face, which is right over here. If you can see my face, it would be right here. Hello, face. So yeah, it's a nice display. It's a pretty display. Viewing angles are not among the very best. Colors are pretty darn nice on it, but obviously if you like a Super AMOLED better, it's not going to be Super AMOLED. Phone dialer here, very clean, very pure. Funny, it's called the Moto X. Pure, isn't it? This is pretty much stock Android 5.1. You've got the Google Now launcher, so if you swipe to the side, you get the Google Now launcher information. It adds home screens as necessary when you install more applications. The application palette is pretty much stock Android. Now Motorola adds a couple of customizations and some that we know and love. Pretty much everything is going to be on the Motorola tab here, but you can see even the basic settings are all standard stuff. You can add your Motorola ID if you want in here for lost phone. And for your Moto settings now, they've moved over to here. And the usual yada yada tries to explain things. It too has voice control. I'm pretty happy with just Google Now voice control, but you can use this. And if you're not in the mood to tell it what to do, you can tap on the cute little stars. Here we have Moto Assist, Moto Actions, the Moto Voice that we saw, Moto Display, which is my favorite. So even if the phone is off, so you can just pick it up and it'll show you your sleep screen here with a little unlock and if there's any notifications available there. It's nice, you just pick it up, you look at it, you don't actually have to turn the phone on and unlock it to find out if you've missed calls, if you have messages, all that sort of thing. So what's inside our phone? It's a 1.86 gigahertz Snapdragon 808 with Adreno 418 graphics. That's a pretty powerful CPU and uh, the, obviously it's not a Snapdragon 410, but it's still a hexa-core CPU, 64-bit, pretty fast. Same thing that's in the LG G4, generates less heat, so that's a plus. Of course, if you do want the, the Snapdragon 810 that's available, the OnePlus 2, the HTC One, M9, and so on. 3 gigs of RAM, which is fine. This is running pretty close to stock Android. 3 gigs is more than adequate, even for a hefty amount of multitasking and having a game suspended in the background, that sort of thing. 16, 32, or 64 gigs of storage. Each additional storage increment will increase the cost by $50. So your 399 model becomes the $450 model with 32 gigs and add on yet another $50 if you want the 64 gigs. You can expand storage, like I mentioned, with that micro SD card right up here underneath the little door. So you have options there. In fact, the phone offers to store all music, video, media files by default on a card if you wanted to, and it can even move them there when you first insert a card. So that's pretty nice stuff. The display is protected by Gorilla Glass 3, which is nice. And also it still has that beautiful kind of bevel look right here, which I think is very attractive as well. 
camera, five megapixel camera on the front. And these days, everybody wants a high megapixel selfie camera. It can shoot 1080p video. It has a night mode as well. Back camera, 21 megapixel. Like I said, we'll take a look at the camera in detail in a minute. So highest megapixel count right now on an Android phone. Megapixels aren't everything, but I can tell you one thing. The last year's Moto X camera was a sad, sad thing. Gotten a lot better here. One more thing about that front camera, it actually has a flash on the front too, which you might say, hey, that's a great idea when I take pictures of myself half drunk in the bar late at night. Well, it's blinding. After you use the front flash once, you'll never want to turn on the rear flash again because you're going to realize just how painful it is. But, you know, it's not really that the back flash is painful and it's not. It's a pretty good flash. But because we tend to hold the phone pretty close when we take a selfie because most of us don't have six foot long arms, it's just you're awful close to the flash. So I have not enjoyed the feature as much as I might. Camera is typical Motorola, which is pretty close to stock Android again. And you tap to focus, set exposure, and take a picture. I wouldn't mind just having the usual camera button, honestly, but no, we don't get that. If you want settings, obviously you swipe in. We have the wheel of joy to choose between various settings. We have automatic HDR mode right there. To switch to video, you tap the video button and it immediately starts recording. Keep that in mind. It can shoot 4K video. It does not have optical image stabilization. There is software stabilization. It's not bad. Switching front to back cameras right here. Focusing is a little, it's pretty good usually in good light. If the light's low light, and I mean indoor, it's at night in your living room, you have lights on everywhere. I don't mean really, really in the dark. It can miss focus a lot, especially when you tap the focusing, you think that should help it. And that's something that could be, I hope, addressed in firmware. So let's take a look at our pictures. Here's our bath toy I just took a picture of. A lot of vignetting there, actually. It's a little bit dark. It often does better than that. I mean, this is obviously a very bright setting, so I'm not sure what happened there. Here's an example of a dark room. Okay, it did use the flash that gave the cat devil eyes, but it's pretty sharp, actually, and not bad. A little bit digitized looking. The camera, in general, tends to maybe over-sharpen a little bit, but other than the fact that, you know, flashes and cat's eyes are not the best thing. There's my honey, my little car. And... You can see it does white out on bright areas. Hey, it is still a camera phone. That's just not bad, honestly. It did create a little artifact over the fender well there. Made me think that had scratch on my fender. Thank God I don't. But overall, it's a pretty balanced outdoor shot. Just a blue sky landscape. And how sharp are those leaves? Let's see. As we zoom in, they're pretty good. Contrast is a little high. Sharpening might be a little bit high, but that, I think most people are going to be really pretty happy with that camera. And you can actually make out the power lines connecting to the power pole. Here's an example of when it didn't work out so well with the camera. And no, actually, it didn't use the flash this time, but it managed to white out the cat's thigh really surprisingly. So we have the blurry and whited out cat. It was so blurry that our camera person actually said, oh, wait, my video camera's not focused. Oops. So let's take a look at it. So I tried it again. It really didn't get any better. So sometimes you just never know. And how about the front camera? It, it's a little bit hazy there. And I took it outdoors to get some good light. So I'm still not too, too, too excited there. And because it's a wide angle lens, it's nice. It captures a lot of the background. If you've got a big nose like me, it's going to look even bigger. So beware of that. And here's a video we shot. This is the usual pool video. There is no optical image stabilization on the Moto X. It looks pretty good. It's fairly smooth. What happens when I walk? It's not bad. So video all the way up to 4K, also pretty pleasing on this. Camera app has a barcode and QR code reader built in. Just aim and focus on those things, and voila, it works. You don't need a separate app. That's pretty darn nice. Other features include Wi-Fi 802.11, AC, GPS, Bluetooth, the usual goodies that you would have for wireless stuff inside. 3,000 milliamp battery sealed inside. There is no way to take that back off. 3,000 is kind of like standard for a big fabulously sized phone these days. Battery life is not much better than the competition. Well, it's about the same size battery. It's a big screen. That's not a surprise. So it should last you all day on a charge unless you're a heavy, heavy user. Let's play games, use the GPS, that sort of thing. 
but this is not a two day phone or something like that. Happily, again, the quick charger is in the box, so it does charge up pretty quickly. You can top up like 40% in 15 minutes, and that's really a help, honestly. For benchmarks, for you folks who are into that, we'll put a little benchmark slide in too so you can see it. But Quadrant 24,771 on Tutu 48,700, where the top phones score about 63,000. Geekbench 3, 1260 single core, 3467 multi core. 3D Mark iStorm Unlimited, 19,703. That's actually, relatively speaking, a pretty good showing. The, uh, the Adreno 418 is not bad. So, not as fast as the fastest phones, the HTC One M9, the Samsung Galaxy S6, and Note 5 family of phones. But again, the price is also less. And that speaks to the fact that th this is a very fast, responsive phone. I have not had it lag, bogged down with multiple apps running when playing games. So, Speed isn't everything past a certain point, especially if you're looking to save 200 bucks versus a flagship phone. And just so you can hear those speakers, they're at two thirds volume at the moment. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time yet sounds, again. Sounds and good, yeah. This one was obvious. We just had to Better do it, didn't we? We have the iPad Air 2 over here, the incumbent. It's almost a year old. That's pretty pretty darn loud, honestly, and it doesn't distort a lot of high volume, so it's pretty nice. Overall, how do I feel about this phone? I like the phone for the price. It is pretty darn nice. 400 bucks instead of 650 to 850 dollars for some of today's flagship phones. You get a lot of what's important here. You get a fast CPU. You get a very pleasing and pretty design. In fact, it's customizable. The cameras they could be better, but they are worlds, worlds better from the last year's Moto X. And I'm sure there will be some software improvements. Improving focus is not. A difficult thing when you see a camera that just can't expose to save its life then I worry that there might not be a firmware fix but exposure and stuff on this is pretty good just needs a bit better focusing on it really good call quality on this as we expect from Motorola and reception we've tried this on several different carriers since it is unlocked and that is the case on all the carriers that we have tested the QHD screen is nice. It's pleasing. The off-angle viewing is not my favorite part. And to be honest, you know, Super AMOLED is always going to look more vivid and have higher contrast. That's just the nature of the beast. Not everybody likes Super AMOLED. If you're just into a regular LCD display, this looks pretty darn good. So, good phone for the price. You're giving up a top camera from the Super Duper flagships. You're giving up even more speed, which you may not even need. Beyond that, it's, it's really pretty solid. So that's the Moto X Pure, or style if you're outside the United States, 2015 edition. Fairly fast phone, pretty fast phone. Let's face it, how fast a phone do you need? If you need the very fastest, there are the flagships at $200 or more per, you know, if you need that kind of thing. But it's pretty fast phone. It's a very good looking phone, especially if you get into the customization options, and they're not that expensive. $25 for wood or leather, hey. I'll take that. Storage increments, that'll get you up there in pricing, but still, a nice QHD display. It's not vibrant super AMOLED. Okay, that's, that's no kidding. It's not a Samsung phone, but still, a very nice display, pleasing colors, adequate brightness, and the cameras may still not be flagship level good, but you get plenty of resolution here. I'm sure there'll be some software updates to quicken up the focus on the rear camera. Pretty decent cameras. I'm not a real fan of the pretty plain user interface and the tap to take a picture thing can't have everything can you it's, it's if that's your biggest complaint you're, you're still doing pretty well it's a very attractive design it is a large phone it is also a heavy phone it feels noticeably heavier in the pocket tighten up your belts you don't want your pants falling down with this guy 4g lte and one phone that works on all four u.s carriers that's pretty rare you don't usually get a phone that speaks both cdma and gsm so verizon sprint at&t t-mobile smaller carriers yes it's a go so if you're the kind of person who needs an unlock phone or just you want to be able to hop carriers and keep your phone. It works. It's not bad. It's pretty nice, actually, for the price. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and hit that like button.